The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the September 23rd, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easy way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but way more important than that. Uh, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead and send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got the Dow trading to the upside, 21 points. Not a big deal. It's basically flat. The S&P is up two points, also flat. The Nasdaq 100 up one point, flat. Uh, the Russell 2000 up one point, flat. The sex, the sex, the sex, yep, and the socks, uh, whichever one you prefer, up one and four tenths percent out there. So lead the charge up 22 buckaroonies, trading out at 1585. New York Stock Exchange flat, Wilshire 5000 is flat. Trannies are not flat, they're down about a half a percent, off 44 points. Uh, NASDAQ Composite is flat. Well, the spot volatility X is down 24 pennies, trading out at 1508. Lead the charge, the upside, it's Equinix, dollar wise, 16 bucks. Boston Beer up 12, Chipotle up. Uh, 12 and price smart up 12 as well to the downside booking holdings uh, 15 bucks Netflix down uh, seven and change Amazon seven and change Mercado Libre the double six dollars and sixty six cents so let's go ahead and begin our session here just simply by taking a look at the markets we have some requests out there maybe as we look at the market some of these requests will be answered so let's take a look at what the markets are doing by taking a look and beginning with our set of daily profiles for the equity futures contract. So what you're looking out here is at the four, the ES, the four horsemen, the, the ES, the NQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000. What do we know about the ES mini? Well, it made another attempt this morning to get above the top of its daily box out there. 3,008 continues to prove to be stiff resistance. The actual high today so far, 3,008.25. We're trading right now at 29.95 and a couple of ticks out there. So uh, resistance is held. That's what we know for the ES Mini. Support has not been tested. Support has not been busted through. That would be 29.72. What do we know about the NQ? It continues to retest the breakout area. The breakout area, you, if you watch this on Tiger TV, you're going to see two uh, rectangular uh, boxes out here. The solid one is the consolidation. The dashed rectangular box is the measured move of the consolidation, which takes you up to 82.15. There's not anything in the charts here just yet that suggests Suggest that that is not the target. Likewise, inside the ES Mini, the target is 3078. Granted, price is stumbling at resistance areas, but support has not been broken. Now, in the case of the Dow Equity Futures contract, that's kind of an interesting scenario uh, because price did close below the bottom of its profile on Friday, the bottom of the profile being 26,924. We're trading at 26,943 right now. Remember, Stevie likes to see follow through. So it's not just the first. 
first crush through support or resistance. It's not day one, although day one can be a signal, but really it's about the follow through. Now, I don't know where the markets will end the day, but if the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract, YM, closes below 26,924, you won't necessarily have follow through to the downside, having made a lower low. I don't know where price closes, but if it does close back below there, there would be follow through enough to say that old support has become resistance. Again, the number 26,924. Now, if you take a look at the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 trading within its breakout consolidation, price on uh, Friday really closed at the uh, bottom of its uh, daily profile, 1561. Uh, that area was tested again today, so far rejected, reject, rejected. So watch 1561. If uh, price does not close below that, the interesting thing about the Russell 2000 is that today's low is a slightly higher low than the low from Friday. I can't say that about the ES Mini. I can't say that about the NQ. And I cannot say that about the Dow, nor can you. But so, as um, Artie Johnson might say, very interesting. What is the message there? Now, oftentimes, when you can't bust through a low, uh, well, you can't bust them down. Things will try to bust them to the upside. So 1561 is going to be a key level to be watching inside of the Russell 2000. No new profiles, guys and gals. We still are living with the profiles from last week. If we take a look at market breadth out here, if we look at the New York Stock Exchange, it is still positive. Uh, the advanced decline oscillator, that is panel number two, still above zero. The reading right now is 29.35. And then the very bottom panel, spot volatility index is below the 50-day exponential moving average. Uh, that puts us in a bullish kind of bias. So what do we know about market breadth for the New York Stock Exchange? It is bullishly biased out there. What do we know about the spot volatility index? It is bullishly biased. What do we know about the market breadth for the S&P for, for the NDX 100? Well, right now, as we take a look at it, we can see that there are basically it's a it's a it's a coin toss. Now, granted, there are 24 constituents trading above the top of the box and 26 trading below the bottom of the box. I don't call that a clear victor uh, for either side out there, either the bulls or bears. But uh, let's uh, be uh, objective here. The bears have a very slight edge here with regard to the market breadth crossover. So we're going to call the NASDAQ 100 as of 113 in the afternoon. We're going to give that one kind of a neutral signal, not kind of, a neutral signal. If we take a look at the S&P 500, a better indicator for the wider swath of the market, still in bullish conditions. You have 154 issues trading above the top of the box, only 83 below the bottom. These are the daily time frames that you and I are looking at out here. So what do we know about market breadth? It's leaning towards the bulls as we speak at 114 in the afternoon. However, leaning towards the bulls means what? Because I ain't going to give you any bull out there. What I'm going to give you is the message of the markets. And right now, what we're dealing with here is, it have to say, kind of an upper level consolidation. Now, be careful out there. When you say upper level consolidation, I don't know why you need to be careful. But if you just take a look at this chart, it just kind of lays things out. It's the keep it simple, Steve chart. Spot volatility index is below the 50-day exponential moving average. Markets are, generally speaking, bullish to sideways. Yes, and the uh, spot volatility index above the 50-day, the message of the markets are bearish for the most part until a bottom is made in the markets. And we know how to find bottoms. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, let's go out to Jupiter, Florida and speak with Bill. Bill, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm well, Steve. Thank you. How about yourself? Doing well also. So tell us what you want to look okay. at in gold. So on the continuous contract, Steve, GC, uh, we've certainly broken the 1528.90 level, <clears throat> which I think was pretty substantial resistance. But it just seems to be, I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'd be curious what your thoughts are. seems to be almost consolidating above that level. I don't see it necessarily breaking out. Yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, so gold is consolidating in between support and resistance right now. We'll take a look at a couple of different levels out here. Uh, the first levels, which are really important, are TAS daily profiles. And so the bottom of that box, Bill, or support, I should say, would be 1499.50. The center of that uh, trading range is at 1506.90. So uh, the center line of the box, much closer to the bottom versus the top, which is at 1536.60. And therefore, this is a bullish structured box. It should be no surprise for price to get up to or towards 1536.60. The actual high today so far, 1531.50. So you're you're absolutely correct in your conclusion that gold thus far has not broken out. Now, if, if price were to close above 1536.60, we would have to say the opposite, especially if there was two closes above that level. But right now, what gold is doing is just consolidating between support and resistance. And inside this profile, it has been communicating to us that uh, we should anticipate that price could make a run for the resistance level or the top of that profile at 1536.60. At the same, same time, as we take a look at the December contract for gold, we can see that price is trading right into Stevie's green line. It's called the oscillator and change line. Now, that is priced at about 1530 right now. Uh, gold is trading at 1531.40. So it's another level of resistance. Looks like today will be day number six of a TD setup uh, nine count pattern now 
out there. Uh, that just means we should be paying attention to it in a couple of days for potential topping signal. But right now, uh, gold has uh, has topping signals. Uh, price is not broken down per se. It would need to close below 1499.50, and uh, and until it does so, maybe we're just going to see a consolidation move um, going sideways in between its profiles. If we also take a look at how gold is trading in other major currencies out there, because I know Peter would have that question, we can see that the price of gold is higher in euros, in yen, in pounds out there. So it is moving higher in all currencies. Back to the dollar front, it's still going to be the top of that profile that it will need to bust through. Now, with regard to is there a big, huge movement in the global flow of capital inside of gold, I take us back to about 27 days ago. Now, 27 days ago is when the equity markets went ahead and last bottomed. Uh, so what I am doing here with this uh, set of tools, Bill, is trying to take a look and understand it, since that time period, since that bottom of 27 days ago, 26, 27 days ago, uh, is there a big flow of capital? Well, where is the glo global flow of capital going just in that short period of time? And there's really not a substantial winner out here. If there's a substantial loser, well, if we take a look at the Dow priced in dollars, it's up about 6%. In terms of euros, 7%. In terms of yen, about 7%. In terms of pounds, only about 2.5%. But when we compare what's going on inside U.S. equity futures contracts, whether it's the Dow or the S&P, we can see that actually the DAX is a bit higher in terms of dollars. When I say a bit, we're talking about 6 versus 8. The Nikkei is at about 8, again, versus 6 when we take a look at U.S. markets, but nothing substantial. The FTSE... Nothing. The Hang Seng, nothing. When I say nothing, they're well below what the movement inside the U.S. markets are. Uh, if we take a look at the Shanghai, about even Stephen out there. In Australia, about even Stephen. Emerging markets, slightly higher, about 7.5%. Gold, flat in that same 27-day time period. So we're not seeing a rush to capital there. Uh, Treasury bonds, actually, in the same time period. Flat to actually uh, slightly lower out here. Uh, and light sweet crude is up about 6%. So there's no big winner that I see, no big predominant uh, global flow of capital in just this last month uh, or 27 trading days out there. So back to your question on gold, uh, and I just had, you know, kind of went into understanding the global flow of capital since we were looking at it with regard to, hey, what's the price pattern behavior today? Still overall, the consolidation is the name of the game for Goldilocks right now, as well as the U.S. equity markets. Wow, terrific, Steve. Great analysis. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anything else that I can do for you? No, that was very good. Very helpful. Okay. Thank you. you you bet. Always good to hear your voice. Thanks so much for calling. That was Bill in uh, Jupiter, Florida. So we did have some other questions that had come in. And so let's go take a look at those. One of those questions, excuse me, coming from Bill, who wants to take a look at the uh, semiconductor index, which is up nicely today, 21 points, up uh, up uh, trading out at 1584. So uh, Bill and everybody else that's watching us on Tiger TV, please do me a favor. Ignore the task market profiles on this chart. I don't feel like changing all of my charts here with regard to the indices, but here's what we do know. We know that the spot volatility index formed a top with a TD setup nine count. That will happen on either bars eight, nine, or the bar following bar nine. In this case here on September 12th, it was the bar following bar nine. Since then, we've seen a move lower out here, and on Friday, what we saw inside the semiconductor indice was a close below Stevie's green line. Now, what's occurring today it can occur between today and tomorrow or, or whenever. Price is going to try to retake that line, uh, Mr. Bill. Uh, that line is at about 1594, it looks like. Maybe it's 1591. So, well, I can tell you how I can tell you. Is that great grammar or what? I can tell you how I can tell you. The easy way, Bill, is just do this. Let me just pull over my uh, daily and weekly levels out here. Even though it's got the fine, oh, shoot, this doesn't have the semiconductor index. Okay, so much for that idea. And since I don't have that going, well, 
No, I'm not going to do that during the uh, while we're live on air. Um, okay, so we got that. Let me switch back to the other charts. It's right around that 1591, 1594 uh, level out there. During the break, I'll see if I can figure that out for you specifically. Um, actually, I can figure it out right now. Let's let's not wait to the break. Uh, the number would be 1591.22. Okay, so now watch that level. If price can close above 1591.22, man, suggests going back and maybe retesting those highs out there, if not uh, something more. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart here for the semis, what do we have? Well, last week was a bearish reversal candle, uh, confirming the roads momentum indicator top. But again, here on a weekly basis, price is not below uh, Stevie's red line, which is at 1554 it's actually green out there so um just tells us really Bill, more about a consolidation where well, we've got these valid tops, but price not breaking through key support levels. That's my read here when I take a look at the semis only in wave number C to the upside. And uh, of course, Baz would have us believing that no matter what, well, I can't say no matter what, but uh, look for wave number four. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, uh, we'll speak of the devil, not that there's a devil here. Uh, price movement higher to with less energy, but no real, you know, just, just this consolidation chart. Uh, Bill, that's what I see when I take a look at the daily, weekly, and monthly time frame for the semiconductors. Topish patterns, but they can't push through support. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to go take a look at Slab, which is Silicon Laboratories out here. If we take a look at the daily, weekly, monthly time frame charts out here, we're going to see that uh, price above resistance for all three time frames, the resistance being the top of their respective profiles for those time periods. So everything looks pretty good here. Of course, we can see that price is trading up near highs. Uh, these may be all-time highs out here. So we've got to go search our other charts to see what kind of signals we have for the slabby one. Silicone Laboratories. If we begin with the daily time frame, we can see that price had been moving to higher, doing less relative energy. Uh, that signal uh, generated back here on September 14th and a couple of days ago, September 20th, there was a bearish reversal candle. Uh, so uh, what's that uh, tell us out here? It tells us about a valid uh, sell signal. Uh, yet uh, price has not been able to bust through any kind of level of support. A key level of support here on the daily time frame for the slabby one would be 106.45 out here. Um, we know we're trading up towards resistance, but that's really about it that I've got on the daily time frame chart. So what that says to me, Bill, is that what we should do is go look at the volume. Now, today's kind of a wide, not kind of, today's a wide-ranging bar thus far. The volume behind the move is 114,000 shares, and it's trading into the swing point that had 388,000 and 219. So it doesn't seem like Slab right now has got the volume behind it to uh, blow through that area. Not that it can't, but uh, right now, as of one 32 in the afternoon doesn't look like it'll be today necessarily if we look at the weekly time frame chart for slab formed a real nice bottom back in the uh, January December time December 2018 actually December 2018 that's that roads momentum indicator bottom uh, this is how markets uh, sometimes form tops or bottoms in this case here a bottom it's a beautiful pattern out there uh, not the kind of beautiful that our president uses when I have more words than, than I think he does beautiful great big you know in any event, don't don't get me off track here. Uh, but what we do know is this did make a beautiful bottom out there with that road momentum indicator uh, signal. Looks like this thing on the weekly chart wants to at least get to that uh, fourth wave out there, right? Letter uh, and it's, it looks like this would be wave number not wave but uh, possibly bar number five of a TD setup nine count. So the weekly chart for slab looks pretty hunky dory to me out here. No topping signals, uh, Bill, that we see there. Uh, if we take a look at a monthly time frame chart yeah price is moving higher doing less relative energy but still no bearish reversal candle uh, also looks like this is going to be month number six of a TD setup nine count so my prognosis for slab or silicone laboratories is is uh, okay it's up at resistance we know that uh, but price has not been able to push lower in light of even a daily uh, bullish re bo uh, bearish reversal signal out there so I think the weekly and the monthly charts out here Bill are uh, suggesting that this wants to go higher I know you had uh, uh, said uh, indicated because of your chart work that this typically bottoms in October um, I don't know. Maybe this is going to top in October. I'm not saying this is going to top in October. I'm just saying right now it's trading up towards its highs, and I don't really see a whole lot to suggest to you or I that this thing is ready to get crushed to the uh, downside. So hopefully that helps you out. We had a request, I believe, from Mike in the uh, Tiger's Den who wanted to take a look at uh, ticker symbol PPLT. I believe that is platinum. No, it is not. Uh, yeah, it is. It's the platinum. But, you know, I'll eventually figure it out. That's the platinum ETF out here. And so really, Mike, if we're going to going to go take a look at uh, platinum. Well, then we have to really, or platinum ETF, we really got to go, we don't have to, but we're going to go take a look and see how platinum is trading. And at this stage here, uh, platinum is trading up towards resistance, Mike, uh, which is the 967.70 level. That's the brand new uh, weekly profile that is here has arrived this week. And the top of the daily is at 972. So here's what you know. If you're long uh, PPLT, if you're long platinum, you've got resistance between 967 and 972. 972. A close above this, a close above those levels would say you're headed back to its high from a couple of weeks ago out there. Nothing bearish about the patterns that we're looking at inside of uh, platinum futures. Now let's go back to P. PLT out here and see what we see. But it's really the platinum chart, Mike. You know, I hate to say it, but I've got to say it. We could spend all the time we wanted on, on this ETF out here. 
Now, hey, look, it did form a new weekly profile uh, last week. The top of it's 92 bucks. Uh, the top of the daily profile is up at 93.47. So, you know, we could convert to a certain extent uh, resistance areas out here, but these resistance areas are less meaningful than the resistance levels coming from the actual physical contract. And what I don't know, Mike, is uh, what contracts are inside of PPLT uh, at this stage of the uh, game out here. You can see the monthly says that we're at resistance. That is PPLT. Um, uh, can I turn on the monthly files here? Let me see. I don't know that the monthly will actually show up, in fact, uh, but we're going to try it anyways. Top of the monthly, nah, it's not showing up. I didn't think it would because there's not enough data when I use the actual contract that is trading out there. So, Mike, my best uh, takeout here, like if I look at the monthly time frame chart for you, what I see is a bottom for platinum. Roads momentum indicator bottom, price moving lower, doing less relative energy, trading in the resistance right now in the monthly time frame, 92.76. So what we do know is you've got the... Uh, You've got the daily and weekly resistance levels uh, for platinum. I would watch those. And on platinum, or I said platinum, on PPLT, sorry for the confusion, you know, close above 92.76 would be a uh, real nice uh, uh, a, a bullish signal out there longer term. It's already giving a nice longer term bullish signal with that Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. That coming from the uh, monthly time frame chart. So I hope that that helps you out. Um, I believe I've cleared out the Tiger's Den questions out there. If I haven't, uh, oh, CVS. There's also, Mike wants to take a look at CVS. So let's go take a look at uh, CVS out here, see what it is doing. Let's switch over to our three time frame charts. Just be consistent. It's always nice to do this. Where is CVS Health trading in relationship to its daily, weekly, monthly profile? So in the daily time frame, what we've got here is a good old-fashioned consolidation with price trading between 62.27 and 64.40. We know 64.40, pretty significant resistance. It was tested on Friday and held. Uh, prices somewhat sold off since then, uh, but just consolidating between profiles. Weekly, prices above resistance, and on the monthly, prices above resistance. Closed above resistance, uh, still trading above resistance uh, this month. Closed above resistance last month. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, the question is, why did price stop where it did a few days ago, a week ago? Well, Mike knows the answer to that question. <laughs> And what we know is that uh, CVS went ahead and completed a, a TD setup nine count. Bar number nine being the top. Um, uh, what Price has not been able to do, though, is not been able to push through support. Support, first level of support, 62.28. Next level of support, if Price closes below that, is where it broke out, 59.69. So the daily's got a topping signal out here. The weekly doesn't, and the monthly doesn't inside of CVS. We come back from this break. We'll finish CVS for Mike. Of course, I want to hear from you too. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at uh, CVS Health Corp. CVS, the ticker symbol out here. And, uh, Mike, if we look at the weekly chart, um, again, no indication of any kind of a uh, top out here. Uh, looks like this week may be bar number eight of a TD setup uh, nine count. So I'm going to defer back to the daily time frame for uh, analyzing what's going on out here. And, here, you know, we do know that it formed a valid topping pattern, the TD setup nine count, uh, but not until price would close below support. And it's a bullish structured profile out here. I would expect, anticipate that CVS would go test the 6228 level. Um, if it closes below that, then uh, price is headed back to where it broke out at 5969. Otherwise, it's just going to consolidate. It's just going to consolidate between support and resistance, 6228 and 6440. That's what I see. But if you're wondering, does it show a topping signal? Well, then the answer to your question is it shows a valid topping signal. But that just simply means that uh, price can just simply push down to support. We identified those. Let's go to Jeff in Dallas. Jeff, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing well, Steve. How are you doing? I am doing well, but I don't have the correct ticker okay. symbol for what you're calling oh, about. What was okay. it that you wanted to look at? Yeah, S&P Futures, so that would be ES. Oh, the ES. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So uh, tell me what uh, uh, what you would like. How can I help you with the ES Mini? Well, well, well we've, we've uh, topped out since the 19th, and I'm looking to re-enter a short position. And um, so just looking to maybe time that a little bit more. It, it looks like maybe even right here might be uh, a good possibility. So let's do this. Here's here's what we do and all. Let me see if I've got a little bit of a cleaner chart for you to look at. That's not it. Uh, give me one moment just to pull it up. Uh, I should be able to pull it up. If not, I'm going to go make it. Yep, I'm going to go make it. Let's do this here. Let me come back to the ES Mini. We're just going to focus on it specifically. Uh, that's not it right here. And uh, here's what I'd like you to know about it as soon as I get it up on the chart. If you're asking where is the best price to go ahead and short the ES Mini, we're going to say it's the top of its profile. Are you able to watch us on Tiger TV? Yeah. Yes, okay. I, yeah, I can see it. Thank you. 
Got it. So I'm turning price off right now. And the reason I'm turning price off is because what we're going to use here for your purposes, uh, we're going to uh, use the uh, top of the daily profile. Uh, the current profile uh, runs between 3,008 at the top and 2,972 at the bottom, and the center line is at 2,999. It says there is more sellers lined up between 2,999 and 3,008. If you're asking where's the ideal price, it would be 3,008. What we have seen in the ES Mini is we've seen we've seen interest session periods where price has gotten over that level, but that's your real key resistance area out here. As far as shorting it, there's no signal that any level of support has been broken, and you must realize that the market breadth of the S&P 500 itself is bullish. And so uh, if you're looking to short uh, the ES Mini at this stage, it should really be some kind of dayish or intraday type of a trade out here. Those are the market conditions that we have. Inside the ES Mini, you've got the spot volatility index still below its 50-day exponential moving average. When you take a look at what happens in the S&P 500, when that uh, condition exists, you've got a sideways-ish to higher market out there. You're seeing this here on this uh, chart, and you go back and take a look over the past year or year and a half, whatever the time period is that I've got in here, um, and you can see how well that uh, would have assisted you in, in making those decisions. So the answer to your question is if you're looking to go short the ES Mini and you think that now is the time, I would have to see some type of signal on my short-term time frame charts, and I don't have that. What we had this morning, and I made uh, subscribers aware of it, was we had a bottoming signal inside the ES Mini. That took place at 5.30 this morning. It's the same bottoming or topping signals, Jeff, that we use for any time frame out here. It's just that the 30-minute uh, time frame or intraday time frames, the 30-minute is a pretty good one for helping us understand what the market is doing. And I thought that's especially important when futures were up fairly nice last evening. You wake up whatever time it might be this morning, you see they've reversed, and you think, Oh, this is just a beautiful sell signal. I wish I would have got in the market and sold it last night or something like that, but I'm going to go ahead and sell it this morning. Maybe that was the thinking at four or five or six or seven, but what we knew. Well, you knew that price was pushing lower, doing less relative energy. We knew the uh, cavalry arrived. They had the bullish engulfing. Uh, uh, they had a bullish piercing candle that formed at 530, was suggesting to you the exact opposite trade, which was the long intraday trade, not a short signal trade out here. And the ES Mini, if it closes above that 3,008 level, so if you're taking that trade, you put that trade on as price gets to that 3,008 area with some kind of stop over that, a close above that level would then signal to you that price is likely headed to 3017 and a quarter. Okay. Okay, that is the last place on a 30-minute chart where the ES Mini broke down. Now, those are just using, you know, my tools out here, uh, but they're pretty good tools. And uh, if we take a look at the 60-minute time frame chart out here, Jeff, same kind of pattern. Price was pushing lower, doing less relative energy, nice piercing candle there. Um, and I'm not seeing any type of topping signal at 148 in the, in the afternoon out here. So tricky markets, if your short was for a long period duration out there, I don't see it right now on the uh, 23rd of September. Yeah, and if I can ask, how do you tell uh, that it has less relative energy? Is there a particular momentum indicator that you look at, or is it? Yeah, I do. I've got a uh, so it's a, I, I have a there's there's five steps to being able to identify that uh, top. I share those exact five steps with uh, subscribers out there and how to watch for that pattern so that they can do it for whatever time frame it might be. But it is using a yeah. part of that relative strength uh, indicator uh, out there to help you understand about that uh, momentum or lack of momentum out okay. there. But this morning right. it was the lack of momentum to the downside. And, and what it did was it, it made it made understanding what the market was communicating to us an easy thing to do versus, hey, look at Friday's close, maybe volume behind that move. Um, uh, I, I, it just it just works. It's just the market is always like stretching to one side or the other. And you want to be able to understand those patterns that help us catch those stretches, so to speak. Right, right, right. Okay, excellent. Well, well thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. I think this helps. Hey, my pleasure. Now, Jeff, I'm assuming that you might be the Jeff that uh, sent me an email, too? 
Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. We yeah, got you all taken thank care of. But thanks, thanks for the call. Much yep. appreciated. And the best of luck on your trade. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Yep. You bet. You bet. Okay. Jeff in uh, Dallas, that was taking a look at the ES Mini. Um, let's go take a look at, we had a request out here from John. Uh, John wants to, what can we expect from JD? Uh, so let's go take a look at uh, JD, see what it's doing, where it's trading. The first charts are going to pop up on your screen. are going to show you the, the daily, the weekly, and the monthly profiles. Prices above the daily, trading in between the weekly, resistance 3181, support 2951, and above the monthly, 2962. So John in Sarasota, uh, JD not looking too shabby out here but let's put up the daily time frame chart see if we can see anything that identifies a top or a bottom and the answer is no but resistance on this thing at 3145 is truly proving to be resistance um john i'm going to look at this during this break i'll come back with my uh, analysis of what can we expect from jd when we get back from this break Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of living a primal lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, John in Sarasota, if we take a look at JD.com, we know that it bottomed on a monthly basis with a nice TD setup. Nine count out there. Uh, this would suggest with prices trading above Stevie's red line, which is 29.62, really the top of the uh, monthly profile, that uh, price is on its way up to 45.23. Not a straight shot, but longer term, that's what it looks like to Stevie uh, based on the chart patterns out there. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, it has interest. Intermediate time frame top with wave number setter seven, letter G on my screen. That was on July 26. Uh, that was after making a roads momentum indicator bottom back in 2018. So now price is really just consolidating the current consolidation area out here inside of JDCOM, I would say is between 3181 and 2951 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at JD.com out there. So we got about a minute to go, folks. I will not be able to be with you tomorrow and Wednesday is uncertain at this stage. I won't even be able to do an early morning uh, show for you. So I'm going to try to be back on a Wednesday. Uh, definitely a, a no show tomorrow and uh, we'll just kind of uh, play it uh, by ear out there. So um uh, just wanted to pass along that public service announcement out there. As far as the rest of the day is concerned out here, um, you know, what do you watch for? You know, like, like uh, Jeff wanted to go sell the ES Mini out here, you know, and plenty of topping-ish type signals out here. But even right now, price above Stevie's green line. And it says uh, further further move, at least for Jeff's concern, up to that 3,008 uh, level. And above that, folks, uh, we had given you a price projection. I don't remember what the number was, 3017, something like that out there. So uh, where we're at, quite frankly, is we're in a market that is just consolidating sideways. Just consolidating. So have a magical Monday. I'll look forward to hopefully seeing you on a wonderful Wednesday, but have a terrific Tuesday. Take care and stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear is up next. David White, Tom O'Brien will take us on home, and I'll see you as soon as I can. Take care.